Well, good morning. It's Saturday morning. Here we are in front of the Christmas tree. We're going to finish this passage from Colossians 1. We're going to read 19 and 20 and go through them again. For in Christ, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. Believe it or not, there's a great deal in that couple of verses. Uh, All the fullness of God was pleased to dwell in Christ. So Jesus is not just some guy that happens to know a lot or think a lot about God or or be close to God or be some sort of guru or uh, some kind of good teacher. Um, He's the incarnation of God, so all of God is in him. It's really mind-blowing if you think about that, and it's very difficult to to frame it into words, but that's that's what he, um, that's who he is. And that's, that's, uh, so that's one great thing, you know. God comes down and lives our lives with us and becomes a part of humanity. Now the second part of that little verse that we read, making peace by the blood of his cross, most of us think, sort of instinctively, uh, that Jesus died for our sins, so Jesus died so we don't have to. He took the punishment that we deserve. Um, he was sinless and he died. We are sinful, but because of his death, we don't have to, you know. It's called substitutionary atonement, and it was a theory about the atonement that was cooked up by St. Anselm in the 1100s. So it's only 800 years old. It's practically brand new in church history. Um, But it's become very, very widespread. It's what the Roman Catholic Church teaches. It's what all Protestant churches teach. Um, But there's some significant problems with it, and I want to go into those for just a minute. Um, Because it posits a God who has to be satisfied whose honor, uh, as uh, Anselm put it, needs to kill somebody. And so if it can't be us, it'll be Jesus. Calvin changed it a little bit several hundred years later and said, well, it's God's wrath that has to be satisfied. God's righteous wrath is angry at sin. and he's, you know, Somebody's got to be punished, either us or Jesus. Really? I don't believe that. I don't think God has to be satisfied in that way that God is that angry. Um, Because if you look at the scripture, and, and, and scripture teaches that, uses that model of the atonement in a couple of places to try to explain to people what uh, Jesus was doing. And that's one of the things that kind of comes out of the book of Hebrews, for example. But in Colossians, in the passage we've just read, uh, the first chapter, uh, in the first chapter of John's Gospel, in uh, Philippians and Ephesians, there are all these places where it's a different picture that's drawn. The early church, and for the first thousand years, thought that, well, um, the, 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 the saving thing that Jesus does is conquer death. And so death is no longer our enemy. Uh, or that he, he um, his love is demonstrated all the way to the cross and it's such a good moral influence on us that we should, we should behave likewise. Um, it's a little hard to get out of the substitutionary uh, paradigm when you're talking about the cross, but what did Jesus do? You know, this passage says he made peace. Well, who makes, who, who, who's, who needs peace? We need to be at peace with God. So he, he made peace through his death. Well, how is that different from what we were talking about a minute ago from the substitutionary concept? It's not really that different, but it's just different enough. And it, it kind of has to do with how we see God. Is God this guy up there that's angry and looking for a reason to 
punish people and looking for something um, that they they uh, they've done that they so they deserve punishment, or is God basically love, who from the beginning of creation decided this is how I'm going to save these people from themselves and kind of what he does. Um, so your view of God will kind of determine how you how you read this verse, and I hope that your view. Um, if you've never thought about this before, maybe we can kind of make your mind go, you know, the purple smoke like on those TV commercials. Um, because, you know, you need that. You need to be sort of poof, amazed, staggered by God's amazing love. Well, that's a lot for a Saturday morning, but you don't have anything else to do today but watch soccer and ponder this. So do that, and we will see you again here on Monday.